10,500 years ago, somebody in the Fertile Crescent tried to milk the oryx. Now, 10,000 years later, we have the dairy industry. Not only is it an ethical disaster because it breaches the sacred bond between mother and child, it is also an environmental and health disaster. And that is why today I am at Love and Arms Animal Sanctuary in Erie, Colorado to get a better look at these majestic beings. Every mother knows that indescribable, visceral, all-consuming love for her child. It is distinct from all other loves. It is the most everlasting, unbreakable bond between two beings. Davy gave birth to Lakshmi on a brisk December evening. Lakshmi was born into a world in which mothers are used for profit. Mothers are forcibly impregnated beginning at two years of age when they are still babies themselves. Lakshmi never would have been able to drink her mother's milk or listen to her mother's breath. She never would have been lulled to sleep by the rhythmic beat of her mother's heart because Lakshmi would have been taken away from Devi the moment she was born. In this world, babies are taken away from their mothers. According to a paper in the journal Animals, one out of eight of all calves born in the US die largely from the emotional toll of separation from their mothers and all in the name of profit. The mother's milk, intended to nourish the life of her baby, is sold as a mere unnecessary beverage. In my opinion, dairy tops the world's cruelest industry list within the animal agriculture system. It brutally exploits the female reproductive system and abuses the sacred and ancient relationship between mother and child. Let's examine the dairy industry deeper so we can understand all its problems and the most effective solutions and alternatives. Just like humans, animals do not produce milk unless they have a baby. Cows and other mammals used for milk must be forcibly impregnated in order to produce milk. In the US, the industry uses what they call, and trigger warning here, rape racks. And during this process, a human sticks their arm inside their butt to manipulate their uterus to effectively impregnate them, all without their consent. At this point, you're probably realizing that the dairy industry is really intense. So let's take a quick cuddle break before we get back to the documentary. Yeah. <laughs> you like uh, neck rubs? You like your neck rubs? The natural lifespan of a cow is 20 years. But most cows are first impregnated around two years of age when they are still babies themselves. Most dairy cows are now spent at four years old, the human equivalent age of just 20. After the birth of each baby, mother and child are separated so that the baby cannot drink her milk, and the mother begins the next phase in her exploitation, milking. For a year or more, she is hooked up to machines that take the milk her body intended for her baby. That could have been the story of Devi and Lakshmi. Davy was originally owned by a rancher in Colorado. The cows were often left in a field with minimal food and water and no shelter from the elements. Davy was impregnated at 15 months, far too early, even by the unconscionable standards of the dairy industry. Just like humans, when a cow is impregnated too early in her development, 
serious health issues can arise. The mother's body is too small to carry such a large calf inside her uterus, creating issues with her internal organ function. Having a calf too young can also thwart the continued growth of the mother so that she may never reach full adult maturation. When the baby is born, the mother will struggle to produce enough milk to sustain her baby as her body is underdeveloped and undernourished. The mother can experience severe emotional stress as she realizes she cannot provide the motherly care she so desperately desires to give her child. The rancher then, for unknown reasons, abandoned all of his cows. He left them no food, water, or shelter. A neighbor noticed that all the cows had been discarded. He saw these individuals as commodities to be used for profit and chose to auction them all off for slaughter. Fortunately, a compassionate soul in the Colorado Jane community heard about these individuals and decided to act. She saved Davy, not knowing she was pregnant, and brought her to another property for temporary refuge. She provided Davy with sanctuary until she could find a permanent home for the mama to be. Davy gave birth to a baby girl, Lakshmi, four days before finding their forever home at Love and Arms Animal Sanctuary. In the industry, when a female calf is born and taken away from her mother, she herself is used for dairy. At two years of age, she will suffer the same forcible impregnation as her mother and become a cog in the machine of the dairy industry. Her body will be used and abused until she can no longer maintain standard milk production. Most dairy cows endure two to four impregnations before her body starts to shut down. She will then be slaughtered for low quality meat. Most factory farm cows never get to step foot outside during their production years, confined instead to indoor sheds that are often filthy and crowded. She is denied the ability to graze, lie comfortably, nurse her young, or live in socially complex herds with her offspring. She lives in and is covered in her own waste for her entire life. Every cow, even females, grow horns. The industry has deemed their horns undesirable, and every cow has their horns either burnt off as a baby with acid or heat, or cut off once they've already grown. This is done with no pain medication or anesthetic. When she gives birth to her baby, like all mothers, the mama cow naturally wants to care for and nurse her child. When her baby is taken from her, mother cows cry for their babies for days and sometimes weeks. Oftentimes, mothers actually lose their voice because they have cried out for their baby so vehemently. Now we need to take a break for a very important scientific fact that you need to know. Baby cows are very cute and they are known as grass puppies. I mean, take a look at this cute little cow behind me. Amazing. All right, now let's get back to the task at hand. In industrial operations, conditions are so unsanitary and mothers are milked by machines so forcefully that many develop mastitis, a painful infection of the udders that seeps pus into the milk. Ew. Their udders become so enlarged and affected that many have trouble standing. To combat this side effect, the industry often chains their legs together to keep them from falling. After two to four years, the mother's body starts to shut down due to the severe stress and trauma of constant impregnation, emotional duress of separation from her babies, and unsanitary and abusive living conditions. Once her milk production drops below industry standard, she is slaughtered for low-grade beef. 
Every dairy cow is eventually killed for meat. In fact, 20% of beef consumed in the US is from the dairy industry. Dairy spells death. This could have been the fate of Marley Rose and Samantha. Both Marley Rose and Samantha are free Martin cows, which are females who were born with a male twin. In utero, the female is exposed to male hormones and she is almost always sterile. As a sterile female, the free Martin calf is useless to the dairy industry because she cannot bear children. Free Martins are slaughtered shortly after birth. Marley Rose came to Love in Arms after the death of her twin brother, Maverick. Both were so ill, they spent a month in the hospital. One out of eight of all baby cows die shortly after birth due to the trauma of separation from their mother. Marley Rose survived that trauma. Maverick did not. At that time, Marley had to be kept separate from the rest of the cows because she was just a baby, too small to safely interact with all of our big boys. Cows are immensely emotional individuals and they crave connection to other beings. Cows form preferential friendships, have best friends, and need physical connection to others. Marley Rose was so lonely that her growth began to slow. Her body literally could not handle the loneliness. We decided to sleep with her so that she could feel loved and connected to other beings while we searched for a permanent solution. We knew that she needed a friend that could spend all day long with her. We reached out to a local farmer and asked if they would be willing to release another free Martin calf. And that's how Samantha came to Love in Arms. Milk is completely unnecessary and even detrimental to humans. It was shaped by evolution to make a baby cow gain 400 pounds in one year. It is an inherently hormonal and fattening fluid. Milk breaks down into casomorphins during digestion, a chemical that is designed to addict the baby cow to its mother's milk so that it continues to feed and grow throughout its first year of life. Casomorphins are chemically similar to morphine and attach to the same receptors in our brain as heroin. Because of this, milk and other dairy products are likely addictive at a chemical level. Cheese, a concentrated form of milk, is even more addictive because of the combination of concentrated casomorphins and high levels of saturated fat and sodium. This is why a lot of people say it is the most difficult animal product to give up. Milk also contains estrogens, IGF-1, which is insulin-like growth factor one, and other growth hormones that promote cell growth, all cell growth. When normal cells mutate into abnormal cells, or what could be called cancer cells, growth factors that are present in the system encourage those cancer cells to multiply. One cancer cell never killed anyone, but when they multiply, that's when we have a problem. And so it's no surprise that IGF-1 plays a role in every stage of cancer growth and spreading. Eno and Gelato are mother goats from North Carolina who were used for their milk for over 10 years. Every year, they were forcibly impregnated 
and had their babies taken from them. As a baby, Gelato had her horns burnt off and Eno's horns were cut off after they had already started growing. For the majority of their lives, their bodies were used for profit and their babies were taken away time and time again. After 10 years of exploitation, their milk production dropped off and they were to be slaughtered. A Love and Arms team member, Jolene, knew Eno and Gelato from her previous life as a dairy worker in North Carolina and through Love and Arms was able to rescue them. Jolene secured the safety of Eno and Gelato and drove them 1,800 miles from North Carolina to their new forever home, Love and Arms Animal Sanctuary. Eno and Gelato are now beautiful mama ambassadors for goats. They love affection and cuddling. As strong women, they have definitely taken charge of our goat group and let everyone know who is boss. And there's a reason that the greatest of all time refers to goat, because goats are great, cute, here is Eno. And a great fact about her is that she has 340 degree vision. She can see pretty much all the way around. Looks like I've lost another round of hide and goat seek. <laughs> I lose every time. Animal agriculture is one of the top, if not the leading cause of climate change, depending on which FAO report you are reading. Dairy cows and other bovines release methane, which is a highly potent greenhouse gas that is especially powerful in the short term. In a 10 year span, methane is about 100 times as powerful as CO2, and we need to address climate change in that time frame. According to a University of Oxford study, plant milks generally have about one quarter of the greenhouse gas emissions per cup as cow's milk. And in terms of how we use land, while dairy isn't all of animal agriculture, animal agriculture uses about 30% of our ice-free land, and this is some of the best land on planet Earth. So dairy also contributes majorly to land use. Waste is also a major issue for dairy operations. One dairy farm creates roughly as much solid waste as a human city of 200,000 people, and this contributes to downstream effects like impaired waterways and dead zones. And it's important to point out the opposite of dead zones, alive zones, which is what this animal sanctuary I'm at kind of feels like, an alive zone. Cows and other mammals used for milk must be impregnated in order to produce milk, and that is usually forcibly done. They must have a baby in order to produce milk, and they need to continue having a baby to keep producing milk. When the baby is a male, the baby is not put back into the dairy industry because males cannot bear children and produce milk. Instead, they are used for veal. Veal is a direct product of the dairy industry. The dairy industry is the veal industry. The male babies of dairy cows cannot exercise and they are fattened for two to four months. At that time, they are sent to slaughter for veal. The male babies must be transported on a truck from their place of origin to a slaughterhouse. These trucks are packed so full that individuals do not have the space to lay down or even to turn around. They spend days on these trucks in transit with no food or water. They are forced to relieve themselves in the truck, creating a cesspool of waste and disease. These trucks are so unsanitary and the lack of food and water is so dangerous that suppliers actually send more individuals than were offered because they expect that a certain percentage will die in transit. One might refer to this as shrinkage. That is the story of Tito the cow. 
Tito was one such extra individual on a veal transport truck. When they arrived at their destination, Tito and his two friends, Gideon and Murphy, were too sick to even stand and would have been discarded immediately. In a moment of compassion, the truck driver contacted sanctuaries to see if someone was able to take them. They arrived at Love and Arms incredibly ill with severe infection, dehydration, and diarrhea. Gideon and Murphy did not survive the trauma of separation from their mothers and the deplorable conditions of the truck. Tito, however, did survive. He spent the first week with us at the veterinary hospital receiving life-saving medical care. After months of recovery, Tito blossomed into the loving, caring, cuddly individual that he is today. He loves connecting with others, both human and non-human, through licks, hugs, and play. Tito is so driven to connect that he actually broke the fence in his effort to greet his newest companion, Lucky, upon his arrival. Humans are the only animals on Earth that choose to drink milk past infancy. And humans are the only animals that choose to drink the milk of another species. In fact, the natural state of most adult humans is lactose intolerance, with about 70% of the global population not being able to digest lactose into adulthood. For the millions of years in our evolution before modern times, humans thrived without the milk of other species. Cow's milk, goat's milk, sheep's milk, and every other kind of milk you can imagine is not a natural food source for humans. The only milk humans need to drink is the milk of their human mother during infancy. Milk is unnecessary and even detrimental to human health, and the system that we have constructed to obtain this unnecessary and unnatural beverage is horrifically cruel. All mothers love their babies. All mothers want to protect their babies from harm, all mothers want to raise their babies as their own. The reality of the dairy industry is that babies are taken away from their mothers and the reproductive system of females is abused for the sake of an unnecessary and unhealthy product. The sacred relationship between mother and child is exploited for profit. All mothers are eventually killed for their meat once their milk production decreases. The male babies from the dairy industry are slaughtered for veal. The dairy industry is the meat industry. Dairy spells death. We do not have to participate in this exploitative, inhumane system. There is a better way. Plant-based alternatives are everywhere, and they are better for your health, the environment, and the animals. By adopting a plant-based diet, you can dodge the risks of high animal protein diets like a 75% increase in all-cause mortality and a 400% increase in cancer risk with high protein consumption. By adopting a plant-based diet, you can reduce your dietary carbon footprint by 50%, your dietary water footprint by 92%, and your dietary land footprint by about 94%. By adopting a plant-based diet, you can live the values of love, kindness, and compassion. You can live the value of Ahimsa, nonviolence toward all living beings. There is a more loving way to live. There is a more compassionate way to live. There is a more sustainable way to live. When you eat plants, your body derives its sustenance from compassion, compassion. not cruelty. Not cruelty. Ditch, dairy. Ditch, dairy. Adopt, Adopt Ahimsa. Ahimsa.